Hi, I'm Stephanie Strange. Want to hear something scary? Hello there. I hope you're excited as I am now that we have new videos on the first Tuesday of every month. And we're hoping that we can bring back the weekly videos very, very soon. In addition, I'll be doing email submissions from you guys and making videos out of them on the second week of the month. And I'll be doing monthly live streams again on the last week of every month. When there's not a new video, we'll be doing compilations from our incredible archive of the scariest stories from around the world. So we hope you enjoy. Addie transferred schools in the middle of the academic year. Being the new kid was hard enough, but being very quiet and shy made it more difficult to adjust. She desperately tried to make herself as invisible as possible, but still always felt different. During lunch, she sat by herself and she stayed on the sidelines during gym. And whenever the teacher took attendance or began to ask the class questions, Addie would slink down low in the chair, and then she would start to bite her nails, or what little was left of them. In math one day, Daryl noticed that Addie had bitten her nails so low, she had drawn blood. A nasty note circulated throughout the classroom. It was a drawing of Addie as a vampire with blood dripping from her lips. Her classmates snickered at her at the accurate yet cruel drawing. The mocking only added to Addie's anxiety. When she noticed her cuticles were bleeding, she switched over to chewing on one of her pencils or she would distractly chomp on her hair. Her classmates were so repulsed by this. These odd tics were so noticeable, even her teacher was so concerned. She eventually asked Addie to stay after class to talk, but having attention drawn to her only made Addie's nerves worse. She began to sweat and she clutched her belly, the nerves made the flutters inside her feel stronger, a carnivorous pit right in her gut. The pain was all so consuming. Addie told her teacher she knew she was different and it stressed her out. Her parents had assured her that no one in school would understand the real her and she would try to keep to herself and focus on the schoolwork and survive the rest of the year. The teacher scoffed at what she felt was terrible parenting advice. She assured Addie all new students felt this way, and she would be fine. It would just take some time. Over the next few weeks, Addie felt like everyone's eyes were on her. She began frequently asking to go to the bathroom, but the teachers caught on and refused. One day, her leg was shaking so furiously, Addie pleaded with the teacher, causing a terrible scene. Addie could feel her stomach churn as she desperately begged, some of the kids looked on laughing, and the teacher eventually relented and gave her a hall pass. Addie quickly raced off to the bathroom, but didn't return within the usual amount of time. Another classmate was sent to check in on her, Frida. Frida was a sweet and shy person herself, and when she entered the bathroom, it seemed empty, aside from a stall at the far end. Besides the knock of the plumbing, she heard with what sounded like a hungry animal gnawing at something. Addie? She asked. No reply. Frida bent down to see if she could spot her classmate's shoes in the end of the stall, but nothing. She figured Addie was hiding, maybe from the strange noises. Addie? She called again. This time, the sound stopped. Frida announced herself and swore that she was just there to make sure that Addie was okay, and yet still no answer. Frida continued, telling her she knew what it was like to be nervous. Frida gave a shaky laugh and admitted up till that point that she too had been afraid to speak to Addie, even though she wanted to since the beginning, since they seemed so much alike. Signs of movement came from the stall as Addie put her feet down. She called through the door to Frida, asking if what she said was really true, if she really felt nervous. Frida assured her that she also got that feeling of utter dread in the pit of her stomach, the one that makes you feel like you're going to die. Yes, replied Frida. Addie let out a huge sigh of relief. She was so glad that she no longer felt alone. Someone understood. Maybe she wasn't the only one of her kind in the school like her parents had presumed. She excitedly emerged from the stall. Frida gasped and momentarily forgot how to breathe. 
Noticing Frida's silent scream, Addie's eyebrows furrowed in concern. What's wrong, friend? Frida stared at the missing limb, her body trembling. Addie looked at the stump, blood beginning to soak through the napkin, and added curiously, Wait, don't yours grow back too? The principal asked Chica to clean out Khadijah's locker. It had been a week since the funeral, and Khadijah's mother hadn't come to pick up the belongings. There had been a party. The cops had shown up and everyone ran. Khadijah took a shortcut, fell into the river, and now she was gone. It took only a minute for Chica to scoop Khadijah's belongings into her own backpack. At first glance, everything seemed normal about the locker. All Khadijah had left was an AP statistics textbook, a tube of bright red lipstick, and a mirror hanging on the inside door. After a moment, Chica moved to close the locker until she heard a voice. What lovely skin. The voice cooed. Chica squinted into the locker, shadows nearly swallowing the locker whole. She stilled trying to find the source of that eerie voice, certain she had misheard. Then the voice spoke again. What a beautiful girl. The voice was sweet, no louder than a whisper, oddly familiar. Almost like Khadijah's voice, but Chica couldn't be sure. They weren't friends, though people like the principal always assumed they were. Chica didn't have friends like Khadijah did, but in their chilly Maryland town, their similar ebony skin and midnight eyes stuck out. In fact, when Chica would pass Khadijah in the hallways, chatting with her large group of attentive blonde friends, Chica sometimes daydreamed that she and Khadijah were long-lost sisters. They both wore their hair natural. Khadijah always had hers tucked neatly behind a pristine silk scarf a scarf she wore to match the other girls. Neat, like Khadijah's locker. Neat in all the ways that Chica was not. The shadows in Khadijah's locker suddenly gave way to a pristine, folded, blue and white silk scarf. It was beautiful. Better than any of the other ones she had seen Khadijah wear, Chica's fingers itched to touch the fine silk. A sensation, like invisible hands, came over her palms. Chica reached in, curling the scarf around her palm. It would fit you so nicely. Try it on, that soft voice suggested. How could Chica refuse it? Even as her skin prickled, she knotted the scarf around her neck. Though it was silk, It felt heavy on Chica's neck, like a paperweight on her collarbone. Chica looked up at the mirror and almost screamed. She didn't just look like Khadijah. In that moment, she was Khadijah. The scarf somehow warped her skin, transformed her face. Chica tried to pull at the scarf. It wouldn't budge, locked tight like an iron necklace. Blood bubbled in her throat. It was suffocating her, snuffing her out. Chica gave it another tug and her elbow cracked against the mirror. The scarf slid off of her neck and in the now cracked glass, Chica saw she had her face again. Trembling, Chica left the scarf in the locker, twisting the lock and shutting the door tight. It was nothing, Chica told herself. She would wait for Khadijah's mom to get the scarf. Two days passed before the locker started to rot. It was a curdling smell that took up the entire hallway, sour and imposing. A stench that followed the students from classroom to classroom. Chica tried to avoid looking at Khadijah's locker on her way to math class, but she saw the unmistakable grime of shadows on its outer edges. She noticed a janitor and the principal trying to pry the locker open. 
Did you try the combination? The principal barked as students stopped to stare. It's stuck shut, the janitor told him with a grunt. The bell rang, clearing the hallway, and Chica pressed nearer to the locker and its overpowering stench. Chica gagged as she got closer, then pressed a shaky hand on the lock. With one twist, it gave way, like it had been waiting to open just for her. Put me on, and everyone will love you. That haunting voice promised from the dark. The shadows dripped from every dark crevice in the locker now, but the scarf hadn't been touched. It was still folded in the center of the locker, pristine. Khadijah pristine. Chica ignored the chill that ran up her spine, and she reached in once more. The scarf settled on Chica's neck, and she didn't pull away from the weight this time. She let it wrap itself around her and breathed in. The hallway now smelled like lilacs, not like rot, but like perfection. Chica... Would you like to come hang with us? A sweet voice called from next to her. Across the hall, Khadijah's blonde friends had watched Chica try on the scarf with wide smiles, their own silk scarves tight around their necks and wrapped in their hair. Chica had been noticed. She looked just like one of them. Chica's hand tightened the scarf around her neck as she moved to close the locker. Before the door shut, Chica caught her reflection in Khadijah's cracked mirror. She saw the face that she wore was definitely not her own. That face smiled right back at her, happy with the life it now possessed. Layla had always been somewhat of an outcast at school. Because of her thin frame and gaunt features, kids were afraid of her. But there were four girls in particular who loved to pick on her. Christina, Emma, Jessica, and Jasmine. They would call her demon girl. Freak. She looks like a witch. Careful, she might put a spell on you. When Layla told a teacher about this, the girls cornered her during lunch period and beat her up. Layla and her family had just moved to a new house. Unfortunately, it wasn't far enough for Layla to switch schools. But the move did excite her because there was a creepy graveyard nearby and rumor had it that there was a black wooden hut where a witch lived. So one night, she decided to visit the hut alone. Led by nothing more than the light from her cell phone, she walked down the rocky path in the graveyard and stood before the small cobweb covered hut. There were no lights or sounds coming from inside. Layla reached for the door and pushed it open. Everything was covered in spiderwebs and dust. It looked like no one had stepped foot in there for decades. Layla walked around inside the small dark shack in fascination, but couldn't shake the feeling that she wasn't completely alone. Then something caught her eye. On the table was a pocket watch. It was the only thing in the shack that wasn't completely covered in dust. It didn't look like it worked anymore though. It only had one hand, which pointed at 12. Still, Layla thought it was beautiful and interesting, so she put it in her pocket and went back home. The next morning, Layla got ready for school like every other day. But when she went downstairs to eat breakfast, her mom shot her a confused look. Did you dye your hair? No. Well, something's different. Layla ignored her mom's comment and ate her breakfast. When she went to the bathroom after her meal, she caught her reflection. Her mom was right. Her hair was darker. Her hair used to be a light brown, but now it was almost black. And over the next month, her hair got even darker and her skin even paler. Her eyes were almost black as well. And then came the shadow. Every now and then in the corner of her eye, Layla would see someone watching her. But when she'd turn to look at it, it'd be gone. And every night she would dream that she was watching herself sleep. Like she was watching from someone else's point of view. One day at school, Layla was trying to get to her classroom without one of her bullies noticing, but failed. 
Christina headed straight for her and immediately began throwing rude words in her face and shoving her. As Christina walked away to her next class, Layla muttered under her breath, I wish she would be out of my life forever. She pulled out the pocket watch and rubbed the engravings. Looking at the watch always made her feel calmer. Layla was both relieved and surprised when none of the girls came near her the rest of the day. The next day, Christina didn't show up to school. Rumor had it that her parents had last minute decided to move back to Shanghai. What an amazing coincidence, Layla thought. She pulled out her pocket watch and noticed something odd. The cover was flipped open and the hand was now pointing at one. The next day, Jessica was in a terrible car crash on her way to school and ended up in a coma. Then Jasmine had gone missing. These girls had always given Layla trouble, but she never wished this on them. She threw the pocket watch in the trash, but it just reappeared in her pocket. Eventually, anyone who had ever given Layla a hard time had something unpleasant happen to them. The hands now pointed at 11. You're a demon, Layla. I don't know what you're doing, but it needs to stop. Do you understand? I have put up with you and your awful friends for years, and you dare to ask mercy of me? I wish you were dead. The next day, Emma was found in the woods near her home. She was devoured by a pack of wolves. When Layla heard the news, she knew things had gone way too far. She had to destroy that pocket watch. That night, she went back to the graveyard near her house to the hut. She threw the watch back on the table and ran back home. And the very next day, Jessica awoke from her coma. Jasmine had been found and reunited with her family. Even Layla's hair and skin were returning to their original colors. The curse was broken and things were back the way they were. Well, maybe not quite. Everyone at school was talking about how Layla somehow put a curse on those who wronged her and no one dared mess with her again. Thanks so much for listening. Like and share if this video gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. See you next time.